What is happening everybody? Welcome to the next video of the S15. As you can see it is epoxy primed, so no more bare steel. Uh, it actually looks kind of cool. So in today's video, what I'm going to be doing is basically messing around with that front bumper. Basically just getting it to fit properly first and then maybe get into modifying this thing that I don't like that much. Um, it's a pretty common uh, problem with a lot of fiberglass parts. Even if you spend a lot of money on them, they're probably still gonna need a little bit of uh, fitment tweaking and stuff, but especially with cheaper stuff like that, so. Then also, I have to take this fender off and mess around with the, the wiring harness. Cause I've, I've got it tucked, but it's actually pushing the fender out. As you can see from here, the door is closed and that's how far out it's sticking. Um, so I gotta do something with that. So I'm gonna get this fender pulled off, see what's going on, see what we can change, and then uh, we'll go from there pretty much. You can see I have it up where basically everyone says to put it. Um, and I did this on my S14 too, so I know like that's where it goes, but on this chassis, I guess the S15, it, it kind of makes sense because the fender is like really concave right here, whereas the S14 kind of goes out all the way to the, to the like wheel lip, right? So it comes all the way around like that, whereas this is like concave in here. So I'm thinking that's where I'm running into an issue because you can see there's like a ding right there. Yeah, so you can see I put it up here and I got these like fastener things to like hold everything. I mean, over here wouldn't be an issue, but I guess here it is an issue. I mean, it's holding it out too far. You can see the blue paint on the harness, but... Nice. Uh, yeah, you can see the blue paint on the harness here, like on the tape, but there's nothing on this or this which I thought was the issue because these are kind of thick because they're like pretty heavy duty. But that is not the issue. It's just the wiring itself, which is kind of crazy. See, I cut it here, routed it out through there. I'm gonna have to think about this for a minute. I took it out of where I had it and you can actually see, um, it was starting to get through the tape. It hasn't touched the wires yet but it was definitely rubbing through the tape everywhere. So, I don't know, that's just, that's not gonna work. So I have to figure something else out. I'm gonna see if I can unplug it from here maybe. I'm assuming it just goes to something, I'm hoping, and you can unplug it. Then maybe pull it back through here and then like route it up inside and then just come through this hole and back into there. But I'm not entirely sure if that's gonna work or not. So I'll have to see. Also, this looks pretty bad, but it's all just surface rust, pretty much. I plan to uh, also, not this winter, maybe next winter, uh, pull like all the subframes and everything out of it and do like the wheel wells really nicely and underneath the car. But I don't really want to get into that right now because I'd like to enjoy this car this summer. And if I start doing that, it's going to snowball and I'm never going to get it done, so. Okay, so this took a pretty wild turn. Um, we're under the dash now. Looks like this giant white plug here, and then the main harness that goes to the steering column is all attached. So I'm just trying to pull all this out. So I have this all torn apart. Um, basically like this main harness here that I had to, I have to unplug all that. Then hopefully, I'm not even 100% sure because there's like nothing on the internet about this. Apparently nobody else has had this problem. I don't know. I googled it. There's tons of stuff for S13, S14 and that would be no problem. But this is clearly it doesn't work like this. plan is to pull all this out back through this hole. And then either route it like down beside there or kind of up around here and then just around the shock tower and then back in through this hole, which is that hole there and then back into that hole. I'm not sure at all um, if there's gonna be enough length to it. So this could be a complete waste of time, but I don't know. It's the only way I can see 
it working. So the one uh, like small wire that goes through there plugs in here, the master, and then it goes way down and plugs into, it's like an ABS sensor, I think. So I get that out. And then hopefully I can pull this all back through that hole and then go ahead and route it up top and then just come back into the same hole. And then plug everything back in and pray that it goes back together the way it came apart. My plan is to put this stuff also in there and well, maybe this somewhere else. Cause the way it was um, tucked up in here, the hood latch wouldn't reach, like the handle latch part wouldn't reach the dash where it was supposed to bolt up. So I just had it laying on the floor forever because going up this far, pulled it out too far, I don't know. So I'll try and put that through there too. And hopefully that'll work. If not, I'll figure something else out, I guess. Okay. Now that is out of there. Trying to get an idea of what we want where. You can see where the tire was actually chunking out the, the tape. It's just the tape though, it didn't get to the wires yet. So I'm gonna have to retape that before I 100% put this in there. It's not gonna reach this. This has to go back basically the exact same spot it was. So like the same length away. Okay, I'll figure something out. Okay, so it's not the prettiest or most comfortable looking thing right now but I think it's gonna work. Uh, I just had to loosen off over here. There's some grounds that were pointed the other way. So I gained a couple inches there. I would really like to get this underneath uh, like the master. And I think that's gonna be possible. Cause it's, this is pretty much like the thinnest part of the harness. I think I can shove it down in there. But like I said, I want to uh, rewrap it. Just get some more tape around it. I mean, it is in there how I wanted it. And this part, I mean, obviously I think it's wiring back into the car uh, through the firewall here, but this should be able to go in there, no problem. And then the length should be the same then technically. I did undo it, so I pulled it back like maybe an inch. Uh, it was, like you can see how clean the tape is up here. It was about up here. Um, but I don't think that much is gonna make a difference. So I think that this is gonna work, which is super good because I wasted so much time on this if it didn't work. I don't have any tape, I have to get some electrical tape. I'll wrap that thing up and I'm hoping I can shove it down just like under here, just so it's not up on top and then you're like staring at it. I mean, I have to redo the whole engine bay anyways, um, cause obviously it's blue and I'm not gonna paint the car blue, so it's gonna suck. So I think that'd be an next winter thing as well. So I'll redo all this anyway. But just for now, I have to get the harness out of this area so the fender doesn't hit it. I get the fender to fit properly, then I can get to fitting the front bumper. That's the whole reason behind all of this. <laughs> I was not expecting to do any of this, but that's what you have to do, I guess. Okay, now that that is kind of under the master. I guess it really didn't make that much of a difference to put it under, but whatever. So it comes out through that hole, under there, and then back up here, and then into the fuse box. I'm hoping that the battery will still fit in there. Should be all right. And then this thing, uh, the filler, will still come up. It comes up like over here. So. So there was a slight change of plans. Uh, instead of coming up through here, 
I actually put it over top of the fuse box and down on this side. So it's got a straight shot. It's actually shorter. Um, so I have more uh, wire sticking out, like look how much I have now. Before it was like, this rubber was like way up here. So definitely have enough room now. And then it also leaves a bit more room for the battery. And then I just routed this instead of up here and around, it just goes straight through this way and then up there. So pretty straightforward. The only thing that kind of sucks, but not really, I'm gonna have to just extend the uh, uh, the wiper, whatever, washer motor stuff, just two wires, but I've extended like six inches. I also have the, uh, the squirter hose and the hood catch release all coming through here now. I mean, it's not the prettiest thing, but this is by no means the final um, form of this engine bay. So it'll be perfectly fine for now. So I've just got it zip tied here and there and there just to keep everything kind of tight. And then I'll go back and I'll take these brackets off. So obviously we don't need that. I'll hammer this back up where it's supposed to be. And it kind of sucks that I cut this now because I don't, don't need that, but whatever. I get the fender back on, make sure it fits all good. It also kind of sucks because both of these bolts snap down here. So I'm gonna have to extract those and you can't get to them from the backside. Normally you get to it from the backside and just like use a pair of vice grips and work them, but it's all covered. So whatever, we'll figure it out. So sometimes this helps um, when you're trying to feed a bunch of wires that kind of like branch off into a bunch of little plugs and stuff. You just wrap them up with tape and then get it through like the hole and generally where it's going to go. Then you just unwrap the tape uh, and plug everything in. Get this somewhat in there and like... There we go. I'm going there and grab it now. Okay, it is successfully back in there. I just gotta put this, back. oh, you know what I forgot to do? Oh, I forgot to tape up that boot. Okay, I'm gonna have to pull it back out for just a couple of inches. That should be good actually, just like that. I just gotta wrap uh, electrical tape around this little boot right here uh, so it stays sealed, especially in here like you get water coming off the wheel, go right in there and collect. That would not be good. So everything is pretty happy where it is. Uh, like I said, I'm probably gonna drill a hole up here and then zip tie this up just to get it like back that extra I don't know, half an inch. Um, I just spray paint a little bit of black, or whatever. Like I said, I plan to do all these wheel wells one day, strip them all out and do a nice job of it, but that is not today, so. It should be good like that. I'm just gonna throw the fender back on. Hopefully it fits good now, it should, because the harness won't be holding it out. So I'm gonna throw that back on and see what happens. So actually, I didn't even have to drill a hole. There is a, I don't know if you can see, there's a little gap in the panel there. So just wrap the zip tie around that and pulled it up quite a bit. So now it's at least definitely gonna hit this and not this. I'll probably still make a, shield for this like I did on my S14. Uh, I'd come like down to here and then probably use these holes. That way there's nothing gonna get into that. But that'd be good for now. So I got it all back together. Now, doesn't seem like much, but I have a functioning hood latch. So it'll reach now. Um, the only issue I had is I have one spare plug I'm gonna do some research, but it might just be like um, an option or something I don't have. Cause it's only three wires, but I took pictures of everything and I don't see it in any of the pictures. And it's just left over, so it's super weird. There we go. And I guess that's how you chuck the fender harness on an S15. It's strange that uh, it's different than the other chassis, but oh well. So 
now. I should have took a before, um, but basically this body line here didn't line up. This is about like a quarter inch higher just because the uh, wiring harness was hitting the fender actually here and causing it to kind of like bow up. So then made a huge gap down here and lifted this way up. But now you can see it's pretty even. It's still off a little bit. And that's just because I have no bolts down here because they both snap. So I have to drill those out and do something with that. But you can already tell it's fitting way better. Uh, it's nice and even. And it's not sticking way out like it was before. Just tighten this fender down. See it's even one more next day too. I'm gonna finish tightening that down and then uh, it'll be good enough. I can throw that bumper on and start messing around with that. This side is actually awful. I mean, here is pretty good actually, but way back here, it's like probably half an inch off. Even though it fits good here, I'm gonna probably slice it like all around here pretty much. Get it to open up more. Because if I just do that here, then it'll have like a bump out. Or you want it to be nice and gradual. So you want to do it basically at the beginning of the fender there. And then get the whole thing to come up with it. See here is not awful. Pretty good. And about right there, it starts to go way in. And then at the back here, so it's like at least half an inch, probably three quarters by the end. So that is going to be the issue and the other side is the same thing. Quite a bit worse really. So I have to spread that wide open. You could technically force it. Uh, as you can see I cracked it though when I did that. And then you never really want to force fit anything, but especially fiberglass parts because as soon as you go to once your body work and paint it and you go to then bend this out, it's just gonna crack and it's just gonna be a nightmare. So better off to just fix it, make it fit good the first time and then you shouldn't have to worry about it. And then you get it to fit where it's just like, just sits right there and you don't have to force it and it'll be good. gonna put this up here temporarily. Still in a little bit, but we can work with that now. But I'll do that to the other side now and see where we're at. So it's fitting pretty good now. Uh, basically as good as we're gonna be able to get it without completely like reshaping this whole thing. So I think that's gonna be good. Uh, but I'm also gonna modify this lower part. So before I go and fiberglass this back together, I might as well cut all this like I want to. cut off and it actually did make it fit quite a bit better there's like no pressure here now at all 
which is good. That's what we wanted. But yeah, you can see see just how far out this thing stuck from the actual like bumper itself. So what I'm gonna try and do is where you see like the edge of the fender, then it kind of kicks out at this part. I'm just gonna try and follow the round of the fender and kind of go like that. And then continue this uh, kind of angle. And about here down, probably the same spot all the way along. Let it kick out a little bit. So I actually think I'm gonna end the video there. Uh, tucking that harness the way that I did, uh, it took a little bit longer than I was expecting it to, just cause you had to go all the way back up, basically to the steering wheel from the fuse box. So uh, I got into the front bumper a little bit, but next video is gonna be the majority of the front bumper uh, building and shaping and stuff like that. So that one should be pretty cool. And hopefully uh, the tuck in the harness helps some people out, I don't know. I couldn't find anything online about it and it's probably better than just tucking it up higher, even on an S14 or S13, you'd probably do the same thing. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it. I know it's kind of an exciting video, uh, just because it took so long to do that and it's kind of boring. But if you are enjoying uh, all the content with the S15, there's definitely gonna be a lot more. There's still a ton of work to do and it's gonna be getting pretty cool, cutting out this bumper and doing cool stuff. So if you wanna subscribe, that'd be sweet. If not, no big deal. But we'll see you in the next one.